Good, I'm ready. The world is a lot better place than you think it is, and the United States is a lot stronger than people are telling you. We want to show you why. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the MFG Advocate on IMTS TV. Today I'm talking to Alan Bollier of ITR Economics who has some good economic news for us going forward and maybe some interesting ideas to consider as we move through the year. How are you today, Alan? I'm great. How are you? I'm excellent. Good. All right, so you were talking that the economy is growing, but a lot of people don't believe it. So what's behind that? I think bad press and I think uh, political uh, pressures, political election year, where it's easier to talk about negative things and how I will make things better if you elect me. So you have to start with a bad premise in order to make things better. Uh, America is a funny place. It, it tends to doubt itself. I'll give you a statistic, a Gallup poll. 53% of America thinks China is larger economically than the United States. That's just, they're convinced of that. Uh, the United States is actually 70% larger than China. So 53% of America couldn't be more wrong. Now, speaking of myths in general, people talk about they don't think anything's made here anymore. There is no manufacturing in the U.S. And actually, the jobs report came out today showing that employment grew in a lot of sectors, but not necessarily manufacturing. But there's a problem probably to tie the correlation of manufacturing strength to strictly job numbers. What do you think about that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it would be a huge mistake. So when I hear a candidate again, because it's presidential election year, saying, I'll bring the manufacturing jobs back, I'm thinking, you don't understand manufacturing. This is about process. This is about collaborative robots, inline robots. It's about skilled humans being able to do the work of six humans from 15 years ago. There's no correlation, and it's nonsensical talk. Manufacturing strength in the United States is impressive, it's amazing, it's lasting, and it's despite the obstacles of high taxes and regulations and all the rest of that, and, and it's not going to go away. The, the capital investment here in the United States is long term. And chemical plants coming to the South, as an example, they don't come and, and spend billions of dollars to leave in three years. They're, they're committed for decades. Mm -hmm. And sure. this is good for us for the long haul. Right. Now, you also mentioned that commodity prices are starting to rise, and yes. that's probably going to help take some fear out of the general atmosphere. Tell us about that. Failing commodity prices and falling commodity prices generally are equated in people's minds with troubled economies, and in particular now it's with China. Are they going to slip into a major recession? Are they going to collapse? What's going on in China? So with stability comes a sense of, oh, the economy's healing. And that means CFOs, CMOs, CEOs begin to think more positively about the future which means they start saying yes instead of wait or no. And it's as simple as that. They, they will believe that the global economy is healing because there's more demand for commodities. It's a pretty simple relationship. It's a powerful relationship. And as I talked about today, there's good evidence of that uh, trough is now and that there's a scent coming in the future. So basically it's kind of perception is reality, no matter yes. what's actually real. <laughs> yes, that's very true. very true. So two things that have been banging around manufacturers a lot have been oil prices low and a strong dollar. What's ahead for those things? Oil prices will be going up second half of this year. And as I forecasted uh, in front of the group, $41 a barrel, which is good news. Uh, it's not great, but it's good because it's moving in the right direction. And, and banks that are worried about bad loans and companies that are facing a serious cash hemorrhage, all that begins to heal and get better uh, towards the end of the year. Um, and it's going to happen because major oil producing nations other than the United States desperately need higher oil prices. So we can expect OPEC-like behavior to return where there will be some uh, at least ceilings put on production, if not some actual production level decline. Sure. So, you know, you mentioned some dark clouds kind of looming ahead for the U.S. economy, and in particular, you mentioned the year 2030. And two things you said contributing to the problems are public debt and health care costs. So what's ahead? Uh, what's ahead is a national uh, government, federal government, and state governments, for that matter, who are unable to meet the pressing load. Uh, they will have borrowed themselves into a position where interest payments become truly burdensome. Right now, they're not at very low interest rates, but interest rates will be going up. They always do. And uh, the amount of people drawing down on state and federal level on health care systems, prescription drugs, Social Security, and other assisted means that uh, are part of the entitlement plan uh, will become purely unaffordable. And it's happening around the world, not just the United States. It's a global Great Depression caused by a lack of having children. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. But I understand you have a book that can help us. And I have six children. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, tell, you know, I don't. Her part, okay, so. <laughs> well, well, I would say I'll pass on taking your kids, but tell us about the book. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Although the kids are grown. Well, so. okay. <laughs> the book is called Prosperity in the Age of Decline. Uh, and my brother and I wrote it, my brother Brian and I, uh, the other principal at ITR Economics, and uh, it's about how to use the bad news that we just talked about in real brief. First, how you can know it's real, and then what do you do about it if you're a baby boomer, if you're a Gen Xer, if you're a millennial? We offer clear uh, investment advice, uh, messaging for your company, messaging for the kids, what the world is going to be looking like when you know you're about there in case it's 2028 instead of 2030 or 2032, but we think it's 2030, but you know, the seven certain signs, if you will, that you're about ready to walk into a depression. And, uh, and then we end with what's the world, the United States in particular, look like after? So you know what's uh, ahead there too. So one last question. You mentioned the elections in the beginning and right now, fear sells. Do you yeah. think the elections are gonna have any impact on the economy? No, not in the near term. Long term, they certainly could, depending on who's elected, and, and uh, we won't get into personalities. Uh, if I may, I could just say, tell you that no matter who's elected at this point, it's just not going to, they are not going to be able to do anything fast enough, he or she, to impact the economy before 2018. Uh, studies show that major piece of economic legislation takes 18 months to be felt in the economy at a minimum. So a new president, it's late January, first 100 days, major piece of legislation, we're into this, well into the second quarter pass Congress and then implement it becomes law uh, middle of the year. So we are looking at nothing until 2019. So we're going to be in a recession in 2019, you may remember. Sure. So whatever that new piece of legislation is could be the trigger for that recession or at least be blamed for it if it's not the trigger. So if it's austerity, look what austerity did. If it's a lot of spending, look what a lot of spending did. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it's uh, uh, if it's Mrs. Clinton, then look at Mrs. Clinton did. If it's you know Mr. Trump, look at Mr. Trump did. Whoever's in office will get blamed for a recession we already see coming. Absolutely. And it's kind of interesting to know that they're helpless. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always good chatting with you, Alan. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Nice seeing you again too. Yes, good to see you. This has been Penny Brown for the MFG Advocate on IMTS TV.